Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer 3 mod review. You see every now and then I check out the workshop and sometimes a mod just really speaks to me. For example, this one which introduces a bunch of regiments of renown but also a new unit. And you can see here this is GMD Path of Change by Dilaguana, a very prolific modder from Warhammer 2. We're already used to his stuff, he's been featured heavily on this channel before. And we've got some pretty cool stuff here, as you can see. These Regiments of Renown will add a little bit more flavor, because right now each of the factions only have one. Keep in mind that this is only for Zinch at the very moment. And, well, you know, you can see something very impressive known as the Bale Tower, which was a unit in Manor War, Warhammer Fantasy's version of a naval battles game. Something very, very impressive, based on one of the old miniatures. The unit cards themselves look really, really cool. The units stand out very well. The Bale Tower is just really cool to see. And let's just check out how they work, their stats and so on. So let's start off with the meat and potatoes here. This is the Bale Tower. And as you can see, good stats all around. It's armored, it's flying. It's always flying, by the way. Armor piercing missiles, it's got barrier too. Now, what this was in Man of War was, you know, a bit of a heavy duty fighter. It kind of is here too. So it fires not just basic projectiles, but it's also an artillery piece. So you can get two different types of fire out there. It's got a lot of range, 360, a decent amount of damage. That's mostly focused on the artillery fire, though. And just in general, a lot of armor. It's going to be able to keep up and running, a lot of HP, too. I love this. Now, keep in mind, it's a little bit overpowered, but this is for campaigns, so, like... Who cares, right? We want to have a bit of fun. Stylistically, it's actually based on some artwork, and it's really, really cool. Honestly, I really love the look of it. I think it's really special. You've also seen in the beginning that there was a size comparison with a Herald of Zinj. So, yeah, it's, um... It's pretty big, it's pretty big, which I think is pretty cool. And if we look towards the Silver Spikes, this is the Regiment of Renown version, it's just a little bit better. It's not going to be much, much better because these things are just horrendously overpowered as they are in a good way though. So you just get a bit of a different look, you get some nice effects. I think it's just done really well. De is always known for working on some really cool models, and this is definitely something very, very, very special. That's not all to this mod. We also have some vanilla-style regiments of renown, the first being the Everwatchers, which uh, the eyes just make me unsettled. It gives me very big Resident Evil vibes, if you know what I mean. But if we look at the stats, you know, it's Frenzy, Damage Dealer, Unbreakable, Flaming Attacks, overall very good stats, and I mean, it just looks super cool. This is something that I wish happened when it came to the Chaos Spawn. I wish we had some unique looking ones like we did more or less with the Soul Grinders. But overall, these are a very good unit that can pack quite the punch, and you'll want to recruit them if you can. Honestly, you can't go wrong with Chaos Spawn anyway, because Chaos Spawn are just really good. Right, so now we have the Warp Stalkers, and these are a Regiment of Renown for the Forsaken, as you can see. They're Armored, Frenzy, and they're just pretty strong overall. They've also got access to Soul Hunters, which will make them stronger in general as they make kills. And to be honest, if you know how to position your Forsaken, you should be able to get a decent amount of kills, so they will get some power going to them. Overall, very good unit. And it's good to see some more Regiments of Renown. Hopefully we see more mods for this, for all the other races, because at the very beginning, just one each. While it was nice from Creative Assembly, you do feel a bit of a lack there. Next we have the Void Screamers. I must admit that I don't usually use Screamers too much when it comes to Warhammer 3, but I really like these mainly because of the coloring, and like I'm really tempted to just buy a box just to paint them this color. But overall good stats, we can see it's a flying unit once again, anti-large, flaming attacks, and they are also able to vanguard, which is pretty good. Overall the stats are decent, so these should be able to last quite a decent amount, depending what you use them for. I'm still kind of learning the streamers myself. And lastly we have the masked ones, which are blue horrors wearing masks, which I think is kind of cool. I think they use the assets, no yeah, they're using the assets from the cultist I believe but yeah overall pretty good they've got fear too generally decent damage the blue horrors they're nothing too special but for an instant recruit you can't really go too wrong especially if you might need an extra frontline unit because the blue horrors are there just to do damage and basically just top it really now when it comes to recruitment they're going to be recruited in the traditional sense these are just the regiments of renown and it's just level up a character get to a certain rank and unlock them we're all used to this for many years now i'd say that they're very decently spread out it's nothing too bad it will take until rank 30 to get the big one for the bail tower but even then 
with how Humphrey works and how aggressive you can be, it won't take too long when it comes to everything else. So obviously this is referring to the actual unit itself. You're going to need a rank five settlement. It's in the same area over there. You can see it's in the last advanced military building. And even then that won't take too long depending on how you build up your buildings and obviously making use of certain benefits to be able to get a decent amount of growth. So you're not going to get it early on, and this is a good thing, because obviously keep in mind that other Xenchian factions should be able to get this too in theory. I've not seen them, mainly because by the time that I started using them in campaign, some others were killed off, or I was just way too far from the others. But it's important to keep that in mind, because you will be dealing with something quite strong if you end up finding the other Xenchian factions. But overall, you shouldn't really have a problem, or at least I think so. So as you've already been able to see, I'm testing out in a battle here, and it's just to showcase the Bale Tower itself. First versus an army versus Nurgle, and I'm doing just the basic gun line, because obviously Zinchi and stuff, this is quick battles too, so you don't really have access to a lot. Also, keep in mind that how everything kind of works, Zinchi is pretty much a hard counter towards Nurgle, considering that their regenerative abilities don't really work too well because they're getting hit with a lot of flaming attacks but in general like you can see the a massive amount of firepower that you get from the bell tower it's able to do two different types of shots so in some cases it can even shoot at multiple targets which i think works out quite well this is obviously depending on your type of positioning and it does a lot a lot of damage I think it's pretty good. It's overpowered, like I said, but then again, it's campaign. And there's different modifiers. If you're playing, say, for example, in legendary mode, it's going to be harder to recruit these because they cost a decent amount of money. I'm going to be very honest with you. They're not cheap. So it kind of balances out with that effect. I don't think you're going to realistically be able to doomstack them because, well, just money is a bit of an issue there. But this is definitely a very strong artillery piece and it can get bogged down, say, for example, if you get caught by furies or anything that's pretty much flying artillery fire against it or range fire against it can take it down keep in mind that yes while this is a flying unit it's still vulnerable to certain things and all in all i must say it's pretty enjoyable i mean i was playing on legendary very hard when i was doing my campaign and i must say it was definitely something it was definitely very very strong but it gave you a sense of, I want to unlock this, I want to see what damage it can do. And it can do a lot of damage even then, it's just kind of expensive to keep going. I must say, I did suffer a little bit when I had them, because I went straight into cafe. I wasn't expecting a lot of firepower back, I do run a lot of mods, just keep in mind. So, cafe is uh, a little bit of a ranged supremacy faction at the moment. But as you've been able to see, the damage, even if you don't do that much micro with it, can be quite heavy. And at this point, you know, the enemies are lagging at me so I do have to be a bit careful because friendly fire is definitely a thing but overall I can easily beat these factions without having too much of an issue again Nurgle yeah you know against warp fire you're going to be at a very good advantage so it's not too bad here and obviously this is just a basic battle done in custom battles so there's no other modifiers Nurgle hasn't been able to get access to all these different technologies and boost to the units but the damage is done pretty fast and think overall it's pretty impressive. I did try it on Corn too just to test it because well you know versus Nurgle you're at a very very good advantage. So here you can see that shooting at the Skull Crushers I didn't do a lot of damage. Shooting at the Warriors of Chaos on the other hand uh, yeah, those did take a bit of damage. It very much depends on what you hit and what the resistances are, but overall, no, well, Corn did fare much better. Mind you, you're going to be doing a lot of damage when it comes to using the Bale Tower, it's just that strong. But, yeah, I mean, if you pair this and you're heavily modding your game, which in most cases for Total War... It is the case, you won't really notice too much of a thing, and every now and then you should be able to use an overpowered unit, right? I mean, it's for fun, it's a campaign, it's literally for fun. Korn was able to do a decent amount more damage, that's for sure, and I do think he would have been able to do more if the AI wasn't so stupid, so you can see at this point that the um, Exalted Bloodthirster just kind of chases around my lord, because, you know, kiting and so on. Uh, it's an AI issue, it can't really be helped unless Creative Assembly rework AI in total, but yeah, no, the damage is much better, you can see that there are no worries. So yeah, I must say, very, very fun mod, stunning unit, it's a big thing, but Dilaguan has always done really cool stuff. If you want to try it out for yourself, the mod will be linked in the description below. I will highly recommend it because it's just that cool, and yeah, I'll let the rest of the battle play out so you can see my frustrations versus the um, Great Unclean one. It turned into an episode of Wacky Races at one point.